for a few people to make it very difficult for us to help a lot of Virginians. But every step forward will save lives, improve lives, and roll back the erosion of rights that Virginia women have experienced after years of extreme legislation. And NARAL Virginia helps make every single step forward possible. Um, and so I want to thank NARAL Virginia. And I also want to thank uh, Senator Wexton for that very kind introduction. My, my state senator, uh, and she's doing a great job, and I'm happy to bequeath the title of best hair in the Senate. <laughs> she wears it well. Um, I'd also like to uh, commend my uh, friend and former colleague in the Senate, Mamie Locke, uh, and her recognition tonight. Mamie actually had probably the toughest job in the Senate back in 2006 when I was elected. She was my deskmate. Uh, and when I was brand new, she was assigned the responsibility of taking me under her wing and minimizing my rookie mistakes. Uh, no, Mark, the green one. <laughs> was the beginning of a great friendship and you're doing a great job. Um, I'd also like to, to commend and thank Leanne for her work and uh, for the tremendous uh, work that Congressman Moran has done for women's rights and women's health care uh, for the years that he has served. Um, I also am looking around this room and I have to thank each and every one of you for all of your help last year during the campaign. Uh, when the polls closed last November, uh, Virginia women, as uh, Jennifer said, had the first attorney general in two decades who would stand up and fight uh, for women and their own health care decisions. But it was by a very slender margin. <laughs> and one very expensive and, uh, and annoying recount later, I actually quintupled my lead. Uh, going from uh, 163 votes to 907 votes as the largest. Um, but, you know, I'm looking around the room and I know how hard many of you worked and, you know, I think if just each one of you uh, were able to, to turn three votes out, that made the difference right there. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for your hard work during the campaign. Um, also, because you were kind enough to invite me, um, and I know that many of you are, are passionate about uh, some other priorities as well, I hope you'll permit me an opportunity to give you just a brief report card uh, on some of the other things that we've been up to. Um, as you know, we've been successfully arguing that the Commonwealth's ban on marriage uh, for same-sex couples violates the United States Constitution, and I was proud to be the first uh, state attorney general in the nation to successfully fight and to strike down a state's marriage ban. Yeah. And now other states are following Virginia. How about that? Um, we've also been defending Virginia's Chesapeake Bay cleanup plan from attack by uh, industrial scale agricultural interests who have gotten the support of attorneys general from 21 other states from Alaska, Montana, Kansas, Texas, states that don't touch the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> um, I, I'll just share a real quick story. I, I read that, I, I was in Leesburg, and uh, there was an article that ran in the Post, and I was there having my shredded wheat and morning coffee, as is my habit, and I opened, uh, and I saw the headline, 21 states attorneys general file suit to overturn the bank plan. I thought, or they, they joined the suit in an amicus brief. And I said, well, it's time that Virginia's voice is heard. And I, I, I was determined when I saw that, we are going to get involved to make sure the court hears Virginia's perspective. Uh, we also want some important bipartisan public safety legislation, including measures to help protect victims of stalking and witnesses of violent crimes. We want passage of comprehensive patent troll legislation that limits predatory lawsuits over the intellectual property of Virginia small businesses and gave the Attorney General's Office some important uh, enforcement powers. We put the focus on emerging threats and public safety resources with a 2,500 mile public safety tour. We held 22 regional meetings with uh, local prosecutors and law enforcement uh, and had over more than 60 cities, counties, and towns represented. 
We launched an outside, nonpartisan, top to bottom review of the operations of the Office of Attorney General to help reform and update the budget and management of the office, including a strict new ethics policy. And as you heard a few minutes ago, we determined that the children of undocumented immigrants who are considered legally present through their DACA status are eligible for in-state tuition and financial aid at the beginning of all And that's the first four months. Um, you know, in my race last year, uh, my opponent, Mark Obenshank, represented himself as something that he really wasn't. And at every turn uh, during his legislative career, he stood shoulder to shoulder with Ken Cuccinelli and extreme opponents of women making their own health care decisions. And their so-called personhood bill would have outlawed common forms of birth control, including the pill. Uh, I'm sure I don't need to remind anyone in this room about the uh, infamous miscarriage bill. And yet he campaigned saying that he didn't get to decide when or whether abortion is legal in Virginia. Well, that's what the Supreme Court decided 50 years ago. Uh, but, but we all know that candidates like that uh, and public officials like that will do everything in their power to chip away at these important rights. So it's important for everyone individually and collectively to stay involved and to continue to be passionate about our Senate and congressional races this year and our legislative races next year. Otherwise, my job, the governor's job, and the lieutenant governor's job all become that much harder. And as we've seen this year in Richmond, the governor doesn't need any more people who only know how to say no. <laughs> um, so I'm going to close with this. We're now uh, getting close to really the zero hour for Medicaid expansion in Virginia. And the well-being, economic security, and in some cases the lives of up to 400,000 Virginians are on the line. It would bring our federal tax dollars home, boost our economy, and save our rural hospitals. And there's a fail-safe in the plan if the federal government ever paid less than 90% of the cost. The plan is bipartisan, and it's come out of the Senate. Um, the governor, I think, has done just about everything but wrestle an alligator to get it done. Um, and maybe now it's time to bring out the alligator. Um, so I would just like to tell you again how thankful I am for your help and your support. Let's keep working together and keep the fight for reproductive freedom.